Okay. So I thought I would do a session on computer security because a lot of places and a lot of people don't really think about compute, computer security. Okay. So security, there's nothing, so no such thing as completely secure. If I can get access to your computer, I can take over your machine. It's that easy. And looking at the list of people here, and I'm pretty sure Nick could also. Pretty easily. Okay, so there's no such thing as a secure machine entirely. If someone can physical access, they can get to your machine. If they install something on your machine, they can get access to your machine. Here at the diocese, we use a program called Bungar. We use it to access people's machines all the time. Okay. One thing I hear all the time from people that don't know is if you get a VPN, you're totally secure. They can't see where you're going or anything else. Yes and no. If you use a VPN and you connect to somebody, whoever you connected to knows where you're connecting from. They can always find where you're at. Okay. All you're doing is connecting to another computer and connecting to the internet through them. I can do a VPN from home to my work and connect to another site. There's not really most, much security there. All you're doing is trying to hide how you're coming through. Okay. People think they have antiviruses, such as um, Microsoft Security Essentials, Sophos, and all the rest. Virus, antivirus itself is becoming obsolete. The problem is a lot of your virus creators have figured out if they just add a couple bits to a file. Hello. 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 I'm trying Hello. to enter. Carrollton covered. I just entered it on the previous timesheet and it took it. Pardon me? She's talking to somebody else. I just muted her. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So they found out if they just added a couple of bits to a program, antivirus programs didn't catch it. So then they started, then you got programs now called like malware bytes, programs like that, the next generation. And they find it a little bit easier because they see a pattern of what the program's trying to do. Okay. So some of your antiviruses, they're useless anymore. Okay, now you hear things like PUPS, potentially unwanted programs, meaning the virus protection is not sure if you want to use this or not. It doesn't have it in its registry saying this is a safe program. Okay, that happens a lot whenever you're using some types of extensions, like on Chrome or Firefox or something like that. Okay, and then you have malware but just it does stuff to your machine you may not want it to do. It could encrypt something. We'll talk more about encryption in a little bit. It could make your screen turn upside down. Okay. It could just various. Crypto viruses, you hear these all the time in the news. Company X or Y got hit by a crypto virus and they spent millions of dollars trying to get their data back. Okay, I don't know if the idea of a crypto is for security most of the time. What it does is it takes a file and runs it through a mathematical script, causing it to be unrelegible unless you decrypt it by going back through. Okay, a lot of times you'll see um, security like certificates that's a type of crypto between point A to point B. That's why a lot of your sites have HTTPS, okay? It's just so anybody in the middle can't see what's passing, what's going on between the two sites. Back when I started using the internet, back in well, the early 90s, you didn't see a lot of HTTPS sites. Now pretty much everything's an HTTPS site you go to. 
Okay. Here's some things to stay away from. Public Wi-Fi. I know everyone likes to go to McDonald's or uh, Panera Bread so they can, you know, have free Wi-Fi to go surfing on the web, et cetera, because they've only bought two gigs on their cell phone. Okay. Problem with being on public Wi-Fi, like McDonald's, who runs it? You don't know who set it up. You don't know what's in between or anything else. Okay, things you don't want to see when you're using public Wi-Fi. On the left here, it's called a Wi-Fi pineapple. If you go to McDonald's and you see a guy with three antennas, then you don't want to be connected. Okay, <laughs> what this does is it can broadcast like McDonald's's Wi-Fi, and then you pat you connect to it, and you're going through their device, and they can see everywhere you're going. And depending on how they set it up, they can put a certificate on there. So anytime you're trying to connect to some other site, it hits their machine. It makes a connection with yours. Your machine thinks it's talking to the other server and passes the security information to it. So now that machine can see everything you're coming through. It's in plain text. And then it transfers to the other server through its own server certificate and talks to the machine. You never know, it's that quick, okay? So like as it's talking, they're recording everything going through your computer out to their server, their, their five pineapple, and then out to the internet. Now, the reason I put a Pringles can on here, back in the day, people would notice long antennas. I have a couple here that are like three foot long. I can get, pick up a Wi-Fi access point anywhere within a two block radius. Well, they figured out Pringles cans are aluminum. You can actually make a Pringles can into a one directional antenna. So you can actually take a Pringles can, tip it to the its side and point it at something and pick it up at a pretty good decent distance. Sorry. So it's kind of funny. If you go to like, if you see some place, you'd see it more in major cities. I've seen it before. When I went to New York, there was a coffee shop. We were at Starbucks. And the kids thought it was funny that somebody had a Pringles can there. And all that person was doing is trying to see what they can collect on the Wi-Fi there. They... Okay. Here's another one that's really popular for everybody in the diocese. Emails from people you don't know. What I said that. What's that? Wanting uh, gift cards. <laughs> yes. I sent this out. I went on to my own Gmail account, BioConvoy714. And all I did was change my from. I put David Haynes, left stand, dhaines at dwc.org, greater than. And as you can see, it came here just like this. So somebody, I could send it to somebody, and they actually think it's coming from me because there's nothing here that says it's not. But then if you actually show your details, it'll show you that it's actually from Y.O. Convoy 714 at Gmail. We get these all the time. It, it's ridiculous. Should this person, so I send this, no, look at the message itself. Usually it's a Gmail account or an AOL account or another free account. We actually get probably one to two a day. Most of the time our system picks up so it doesn't go out. Because I get the message saying this was blocked. But these are crazy anymore. They're just like always coming through. We had one person give away their vacation money because they received an email, thought it was legit from a principal, sent them the $1,000 gift card, and now they're out. They couldn't go on vacation. It's kind of sad if you think about it. Another one's high-pressure emails. Okay. We, 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 on our business office, we receive them every so often. They know what to look for now. But what they are is they're going to try to say, you owe this. We're going to put, we're going to send it to a debt collector. We're going to sue you, blah, 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 blah. They're not real. They want you to click on that file because what they can do is they can actually install a program that doesn't have to run as administrator. It will run as the user. 
and it could collect your data. Anything you type, it could be sent someplace else. There's all kinds of different ones. Okay, there's ones that could cause little problems. They could just contact the other user on the other side, the person who sent it, and just collect all your information. That's just your local machine. Any files you have, they can receive those. It all depends on the program, how they set it up. Does all this make sense? You're all muted. I got the chat open if you want to send any questions or anything. Okay, but watch out for high pressure emails. They're all the time. Okay, this is one somebody got not too long ago. I sent out an email about this. Hello, blah, blah, blah. Please find your recent place paste clip attached. First, we don't even have that account. So we kind of knew that was fake. Luckily, the person didn't click on this. What it was, was a low level virus. Again, it could run without admin privileges. So all it would do is collect what the person typed in. So let's say they went to a website, they would type in their URL at the top, they would type in their user ID, then they'd type in their password, and who's ever on the other side would have all that information. Kind of wrong if you ask me. Second one, phone call, or last one, phone, phone calls, okay? You have people calling you, okay? They want access to this, that. They're trying to say that your account's been hacked. You need to verify yourself, et cetera. Don't do it, okay? I have more problems. No offense if anyone's here is over 65, but people with over 65, I've seen them lose their entire life savings because they've gone in and done, done what the person said to do, okay? Don't let people like that on your machines, okay? Don't let people pressure you, okay? If they're real, there's ways to check it. If it's the IRS, you can go to the IRS.gov site. If it's Amazon, you can go to the Amazon site. Never will they ask you, hold on you, and say to do this. Brings me to this. Calls, cold calls from the internet company. Okay, it could be Verizon, Frontier, any of them. Calls from Microsoft, the credit card company who doesn't identify what the credit card company is. They want to notify if they're city, Capital One, or anybody else. Calls from Amazon, Google, and everyone's favorite vehicle extended warranty. I get three a day. Okay. As my mom says, it just proves that she's alive because they call, she answers. It's like they're checking up to make sure she's around. Okay. Calls when the person starts asking just a bunch of questions. We're going to do a survey, you know, and they start asking questions. How old are you? You know, just, you know, everything. They do little personal things all the way through. What they're doing is collecting information. Okay. Or like here at the diocese, I get phone calls from supposed salesmen. I don't know if they are or not. And they're like, well, what kind of network do you have? No, I'm not telling you. Well, what are you redoing? No, I'm not telling you. Well, what kind of computers do you have? Us? Yeah, they're, they're asking just a lot of different questions. They could be legit or not. But why am I going to answer questions about that stuff to them? There's no point. All they're doing is collecting information on me. Okay, that's the last thing I want them to have is any kind of information on my site. Okay, verify when someone calls you. Okay, don't just trust everybody because the bad guys, they know all the tricks. If you ever want to see some of them, go on uh, YouTube and watch some of these things that people do just trying to get information. They make millions of dollars off of this stuff, okay? Try not to get hit, okay? Here's some stuff that you might not know about, okay? Let's say you've been using your email account for purchases and everything else. You may wanna check this site, okay? Haveibeenpawned.com, okay? What this does is you'll go to that site You'll put in your email address 
or an account name. And you can see if that account's been taken over by somebody else at some point, if they've been hacked or something like that, or if they've lost your information. Okay. I seriously suggest you checking this site out. Okay. Because not all companies are required to let you know that they've been hijacked at one point, that they've lost your data. Okay. I seriously suggest checking out have I been pawned. Okay. The other one I found interesting is familytreenow.com. For absolutely no cost, you can check up on anybody, find out where they live and their phone numbers, and if there's any family members. This is totally free. Okay. So if I wanted to check on Rich Harold and find out where he lives, I can go to the site, type in Richard Harold, type in Wheeling, West Virginia, and it'll show me his age, where he's lived at his entire life, even his current address, and any phone numbers he's used for free. Okay, so your data's out there. Most of that stuff there I can use to take over somebody. Okay, for the phone numbers, not everybody updates their systems all the time, their credit card background. So I check the phone numbers that he had. And when one of them becomes available, I take, it, I take that number over. Now I can become Richard Harold. Something to make everybody feel good. <laughs> okay, passwords and two-factor authentication. Okay, passwords, change them every so often. Okay, write them down. You feel it's okay. Okay, or use a password manager. Okay, I use Chrome's password manager. Comes free, but it's encrypted. And if one of the sites that I have a password recorded on gets hacked, they notify me. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, password managers are safe because you have to have at least the account that was used to sign on to see those passwords, okay? Use two-factor authentication when available. I know how much people love receiving that text going, okay, please put out your six-digit code and we'll let you in, but it's safer, okay? If a site gets hacked and are able to pull a password down, they will try that user ID and password on multiple sites. And sometimes they get in. When Disney Plus first started out, what well, a bunch of hackers did, is they took emails that they had, got, they had collected and the passwords and tried them on Disney Plus. And there were something like 20% of the accounts at that point they could get into. Okay. One, What's that? Uh, one thing I will add a, a little bit to what David had said with respect to data breaches and they don't have to notify you or everyone's notification is a little bit different. On the average, it may be six to nine months after a breach before it even gets to the news sometimes because a lot of companies, they try to compartmentalize it. They don't want it known in the public. Oh, hey, we were hacked this and that and the other. So it could take a while after that has occurred before something is could happen to you. So that's just a, a more of an underscore of why you want to be thinking about those things. If your company is located in South Dakota, they do not have to let you know that they were breached. That's why you'll see a lot of companies with their headquarters in South Dakota. They may have only one office with four people, but they'll say that's their headquarters, so they don't have to notify you if there's a data breach. The only time they would have to do it is if it's in, if the um, client lives in California and California has a law for that. That's the only state, last time I checked, that required anybody to notify you. And it was kind of funny because the one, you'll see every so often there was a data breach, but only 50,000 people in California were affected, nobody else. Well, yeah, there was other people affected, but because of where they're located, they don't have to tell you. Something to think about. Okay, people said, well, wait, Dave, I was told writing my password is not a good idea. Okay, it's okay to write your password down. 
I actually promote it sometimes. Just don't tape it to your monitor. But, you know, here's the website, here's the email, or the account, and the password. Don't do that, okay? Write it in a little notebook. Don't put it next to your computer. Put it in your drawer or something else, okay? It's safer that way. And get two-factor authentication for as many sites as you can. I, again, I know it's a pain to, you know, go to that little application, type, find out that six-digit code and put it in. But if it will save you $3,000 to do so, might it be worth it for that couple seconds? You know, unless your name's Elon Musk and you're making somewhere around a couple million a minute, I think it's worth it. Okay. Now, here's some other fun stuff. Don't run its admin on your computer. Okay. I know when everyone gets a brand new computer, they're like, okay, what's the account information for setting this up? Okay. I'll make it, you know, our Herald. And here's my password. Well, he's an administrator. So anytime he's working on the computer, he goes to make a change, it'll just do it. Makes life easy. It's also easier for the hackers. If you click a button, it will just run. It may not even pop up anything on the screen. It will just run. At least if you're running as a standard user, it will ask you for a user ID and password to run the program. It's safer. Okay. Another one, don't let everybody and their brother have access to your computer. I know the teenagers are stopping by to their grandparents or something like that. They need to use the computer, blah, blah, blah. Set up a second account for them. Okay. I know this sounds horrible, but I have seen it happen where the kid needs money. They go on grandma and grandpa's computer and they actually go into their bank accounts and send themselves money that grandma and grandpa couldn't afford to give them, but they did it anyway. I'm not saying your family would do it or anybody else's. Just don't give them the chance. Okay. Or they'll install a game. And again, that game could have malware on it, which affects the way your computer works. Okay. I'm going to go back to password managers. Okay. They're good and bad. Okay. Good that you remember your passwords. Tell you if you've been compromised. Bad that people forget their passwords. Or, depending on browsers, uh, password manager you're using, they can actually export all your user IDs and passwords out at one time. I was looking at Firefox today. I went in to look at the password manager there, and it said export. And I actually saw it. it said, yes, you can export without a password. It will allow you to export all the user IDs and passwords from Firefox and put them in plain text. Okay. Google won't let you do that, but Firefox will. Okay. Be careful of the password managers. Like I said, they can be good and bad. Good that they always get you into the site. Bad because people can actually take over your machine and use them against you. That's why you should never let somebody on your machine. Okay. Fun thing. Always enroll in some type of credit monitoring service. Okay. There's free ones out there. There's ones that are expensive, et cetera. Okay. One of the free ones like Credit Karma will let you know anytime someone tries to get anything set up as your account. You'll receive an email saying such a, you know, you just applied for a credit card at Best Buy. Well, if I'm at work and not even close to Best Buy, I may want to contact Best Buy and say, it's not me. Okay. It's just something to watch for. Okay. You want to check your stuff at least once a month. Okay. When I was growing up, about, it was about 20 years ago, my father's credit was actually used in my credit report. And it caused all kinds of problems because my godfather didn't have really great credit. So here I am trying to get a house. And they're like, well, your credit's horrible. And I'm checking at it. And I'm like, well, I've got a 65-year-old man living in Holloway, Ohio. 
okay? So check your stuff every so often. You might find somebody else's part on your credit report, or you might find credit cards you didn't even apply for on there that are being used. Okay. Christmas is on us. Buying stuff on the web. Because it is so much easier to buy stuff on the web than to go to Wally World. Okay. I hate going shopping in public. It's first usually is find someone that knows me and wants to talk forever. Or I just don't find what I'm looking for. Okay. When you're use when you're buying online, okay. A lot of credit card companies now use virtual credit card numbers. You go on their site, you can get a virtual credit card number. Okay, it's just a number that links back to your regular credit card, but you don't have to put it out. You don't have to put your real credit card number out on the web for someone to take. Okay, one of the credit card companies you, you have, I'll plug Capital One. I have over 20 credit card numbers used with them. Each credit card they give me is only good at that one place. Okay, so I have one for Amazon. That credit card is only good for Amazon. So if someone tries to use it at a bookstore in England, that credit card will not work. It will only work at Amazon. Another good thing to use is PayPal, goods and services. If you go to Etsy and buy the handmade stuff or some of the other places, PayPal is an option. Okay, PayPal keeps your information safe, your credit card or your bank account information. Okay. Again, so your information is not there, out there on the web for everybody to use, okay? You don't want to have your credit card in 15 different places being recorded because, again, you don't know if it's going to be hacked, okay? Venmo recently started a system also where you can do goods and services, okay? Kind of like PayPal, if you don't get your stuff, you get your money back, okay? For a while there, if you use Venmo, anytime you use, you know, transferred money with it, you didn't get anything back if it didn't show up, okay? Now they offer PayPal goods and services and Venmo goods and services. At least that way, if the person doesn't supply you with what you're supposed to get, they, you get your money back, okay? Things not to use on the web. Do not use debit cards. You have no protection with the debit card like you would a credit card, okay? When people tell you they're the same thing, a debit card and a credit card are the same thing, they are not, okay? I don't know if any of you remember the days when it first came out with debit cards, it actually said check card because it was like checks, okay? Debit cards are not the same as credit cards. Try not to use them anywhere except to get money out of the ATM, okay? Because if it's recorded, you could lose everything, okay? PayPal friends and family, you have no protection on. So if you buy something online, that you're using friends and family, they don't have to send it to you. Because you're saying friends and family, you know this person, you trust this person. If they don't send it to you, it's all on you. Same with Venmo friends. If you use Venmo friends, no protection. Okay, I've seen people, they received the Venmo friends request for money. They didn't think about it. They thought it was, you know, goods and services. <laughs> And they lost their money. I've seen people, I, I run a couple of Facebook groups. I've seen people lose hundreds of dollars with that. Okay. Try not to use your real credit card information. Okay. Again, you're putting it out there. They can say it's, you know, completely protected by 256 bit encryption. Okay. But at some point, if the bad guys get the certificate to decrypt it, they could have your real information. Okay, and then you're there trying to clean up that mess. Okay, I do a lot of my transactions with my credit card because of protection. The last thing I need to do is lose my credit card for quite a while. But, you know, I get a new one coming in the mail and all the problems going, well, this one's a real credit charge and this one's not, blah, blah, blah with the bank. Okay, something else, some of the older people that may have problems with this one, don't use checks anymore. Okay, back in the day, checks were popular. You could use them at Kroger's and get stuff, the department stores, et cetera. The problem with checks is it has your routing information, 
where your bank's located, your bank account number, and it has your signature on it most of the time. That's all I really need to take over your account. There's those things. If I can go to PayPal and say, okay, PayPal, I am X person X, here's my routing number, here is my um, account information, I'm all good. I'm now that person. I can steal as much money as I want. Okay? So try not to use checks as much as possible. Okay? Anybody have any questions or anything? I know I fly through this stuff. I don't time things very well because I'm not really good without any kind of feedback. One thing we tell people here on our campus, and this is, you know, we don't want to sound overly paranoid, but, you know, it's just like you think, you know, the third class mail when it comes to your house. Oh boy, I'm going to open that third class mail. That's really good. I'm going to act on it. No, just be overly suspicious, overly cautious. If I'm trying to get a hold of you and it's really that important, I'm going to call you or I'll find some other way to communicate with you. You know, worst case comes to worst, you know, the IRS isn't going to come and arrest you if you don't do this or do that, you know, just be, just treat all, a lot of these things, like, like you said, we, we used to treat the, you know, the junk mail. And if you think about it from that context, these bad actors, they can, you know, it used to be on the direct mail piece. If you sent out a thousand direct mail and you got 1%, 2%, that was good. The order of magnitude when these folks sending out these bad things, they're worldwide. A lot of times they're in places where law enforcement can't deal with them. And, you know, like I said, if they get a similar percentage, it costs them virtually nothing to launch these attacks and do this against you. So just Kind of always be a little bit suspicious in the back of your mind because that could potentially save you some some hassles. Oh, unlike Rich, I'm totally paranoid and don't trust anybody. Okay, so I always think everyone's out to get me because most of the time somebody is. I had a question. Somebody asked if they shouldn't use checks to pay bills, utilities, department stores. Okay, so I pay. I use a check at a department store. How many people see that check? You don't know. So I could have a bad actor recording people's checking account information at a department store. You know, I've seen gas stations um, that at the end of the day, they print out everyone's credit card information to forward it so they can collect. Okay. Um, as far as utilities go also, I actually pay a lot of my utilities online. Um, for like AEP, I use my check free with that. So they're the only ones with my account information. And for like my gas company, I use DOXO. That's for Mountaineer Gas. They don't, neither place charges any money for the for this. And again, that way my information is not all, all over the place. Because I hate, no, I don't, I hate having all my information other places. Okay. Somebody brought up privacy.com. Uh, I've never used privacy.com. So I'm trusting the person that said this, sent this is Nick. But I, again, my, I go to my credit card company for my, my virtual credit card numbers. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, some credit card companies like Discover don't offer virtual card numbers. But what they do is they say if you're if your information gets out, there's zero dollars liability. Okay, but yeah, I guess privacy, I'll check privacy.com about doing virtual numbers with certain amounts. I figure you probably have to pay for them. It's kind of like a um, gift card. Okay. Any other have, anybody else has any other questions or anything like that? Again, I know I go fast. It's just hard when you're not getting any feedback. 
whenever I had, when I was working, teaching at high schools, if I didn't get feedback, I would start harassing somebody until somebody gave me some information. Or in college, the same thing. I'd call them lumps. Then they'd start talking. Okay. If you come up with any questions or want to know of anything, give me an email or a call. My, my work phone number here, extension is 225. It goes straight to my cell phone. Or dhaines at dwc.org. Okay, as long as you're not asking for personal information, I'll answer you. We had a thing this morning. I got a, an email from a company saying, we've set up your account information. Like, I had to go to Rich and go, is this real? Before I even tried to log into it. Okay. Is there any other questions or anything? I'm hoping I scared you a little bit. Okay. If we do another, if we do PACE next year, I'll have more stuff to talk about and more scary things to show you, such as the life by pineapple. I actually have one here and I'll show you land turtles and things like that. It's just, I can't show you that here on a, a Zoom meeting. All right. Okay, I'm gonna leave if nobody has any questions. Okay, I wish everybody a good weekend.